Still Blender Savages. So today I'm going to show you how to make a, a jiggly fluffy bread. Japanese fluffy jiggly cheese bread, cheesecake bread, whatever you want to call it. All right, I'm going to use jiggle physics for this. Bam. And then we'll use the uh, some of the notes for the texture here of the bread. All right, so let's get started. So obviously that bread is cube shaped. So I'm going to reshape my cube here into something similar to that bread. So I'm at S for scale, and then Z to snap the, the scale to the Z axis. That was not Z. There we go, that Z right there. 0.5, enter. And let me bring up my uh, screencast tool there. All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to pull this up a bit so it's above the, uh, the axis origin there. G, Z, 0.5, enter. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to take the sweater mode and subdivide it because to use the uh, bounce physics, which was, uh, sorry, soft body physics, uh, each of these uh, edges right here will become a, a spring, so I need more edges. I'm going to subdivide it here, tab key for edit mode. I'm going to right click my cake here, subdivide, open up the side sub subdivide menu here, and change the number of cuts to seven. There we go. So it's kind of tricky with the, with the edges. You don't want too many because then it becomes too stiff and too little, and the whole thing will collapse. So there we go. All right. And um, if you look at pictures of the fluffy cake, or any cake in general, when you bake cake, it fluffs up, right? There's air inside of it. So we're going to pull this up right here. I'm at one for front view, 10 for top view. Drag select those uh, vertices there for those four faces. One for front view. I'm going to hit O to activate the proportional editing tool, which is this button right here. If I hit the O key, O for Oscar, it activates it. There you go. G, Z. I'm going to pull it up, just freehand it to whatever looks good. And now I'm not changing the size of the circle. If you go up too high, then it's just going to look really weird. So let me try 0.2. There you go, point two looks good. All right, so I'm done with that. I'm gonna go back to object mode. Here I am in object mode. Cool, I got my bread there. Still looks uh, pretty rough, right? You can see those pixels there. So let's soften it up. I'm gonna right click it, select shade smooth, and still not soft enough. So I'm gonna soften up further. So I'm gonna go over here to the modifier, sorry, the properties uh, panel, and click on the modifier there, and add modifier, and I'm gonna select subdivision surface right here. Smooth it out more. Cool. See, it's already looking smoother. And I'm going to increase these right here to three. Oh, too far. There we go. So now it's a lot more smoother. Now it looks more like the, the fluffy bread. Uh, so we got to give it the jiggle. If I just make it jiggly right now, it's going to fall all the way down if I add a soft body physics to it. So let me show you right now. So I'm going to go over here to physics, the properties panel, select soft body, and then play button. And bye bye, bread. Ooh, bounce back up. Got some wind there. Let me pause that, go back to frame one. But let's give it a base down there. Let's give it something uh, to land on. I'm going to shift A, mesh, and I'm going to bring in a plane. There we go. There's a plane there. Let me make that bigger. So I'm going to scale it along the Y axis first. S, Y, 5, enter. There we go. I'm going to make a nice table here. And S, X, 2.5, enter. There we go. It's got a nice little table there. Zero for camera view. Looks good in the camera view there. And if you notice, it's sitting right below the, the bread right there, because earlier we moved the bread up. All right, so back to my bread. Oh, forgot one thing right here with the plane. Physics tab is accessed here, and collision. Apply collision to it. That way the bread uh, doesn't go through the, through the plane. All right, back to the bread over here. And now I'm going to open up edges right here. Watch out for that box. If you turn it off, you don't want to do that. You want to leave that activated, so you want to leave the Mark in there. Click in there. It goes away. Click in there. We can bring it back. <clears throat> All right, so push. Let me just hit the play button for now. There you go. See what's going on right there. Looks very jiggly. So push is how far away it pushes it out. The strings push out, and the pull is uh, how, 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 how far they pull them in. The strength uh, values for that one for those. I'm going to make them 0.9. You don't want to go up too high because then it's going to become too stiff, but just a little bit of jiggle there, a little bit of stiffness. Cool. Kind of reminds me of um, a waterbed. Let me pause that. I don't need 250 frames, so I'm going to cut this down to 100. Enter. There we go. Back to frame one. And let me open up simulation here. No, not simulation. Cache. And just all the way up to 100. I don't need that many frames. If you like, you can go with more. It's going to take longer to render, more to process. So I just brought it down to 100. All right, so I got a lot of bounce. Let me close cache here. Go back to edges. Oh, damn. That's the energy loss there, the inertia. So I'm going to change that to 0.6. All right. Bouncing. All right. Now I'm going to go over here to bending. <clears throat> That's the bending of the edges. 
So I'm going to increase that to 10. There we go. So we got less bending there. It's not so uh, so flimsy. I got a little bit of a bounce. Cool. Not not uh, as much as before. Now I'm going to activate collision edge. That way the edges don't collide against themselves. They don't go inside each other. So I don't I don't want that happening. I want it to uh, maintain its uh, uh, realism there because things don't typically go inside each other in the real world. So I'm going to click on self collision here. Activate that. And I'm going to expand it. I'm going to click inside of there. And we scroll down. Oh, not that one. Uh, stiffness right here. Activate stiffness. And then open stiffness there. There we go. And then shear right here. I'm going to bring it down a bit. Let me try 0.8. There we go. Now it doesn't look much like a waterbed. It looks a little more like fluffy bread. Let me try to go to frame one. So I can see you from the start. There it is. If uh, your computer starts to slow down while it's playing, let's go ahead and pause it. All right, so back to play. Cool. So I got the physics there. You can play around with these. You can change the push and pull. I wouldn't mess around with the other ones too much because then it's just not going to be um, as realistic. So let me show you another example here with just a regular cube. Shift A, mesh cube. And, oops, I just accidentally hit it. And let me select that cube again. GZ. This is just an example here, not part of the, the project. So there's my cube there. And I'm going to apply the uh, soft body to it. And hit the play button. And this one does not have any geometry on it or anything. And it should just uh, collapse on itself. So what's going on? Back to frame one. And it's kind of just bouncing up and down there. Actually, that's not what I expected. But I'll leave it. But it's not um, bending along these other faces like this one is. All right, so pause that. If I can pause it. There we go. All right. I'm just going to delete that cube there. All right, so now what I want to do is color my bread here. So I'm going to go over to shading. I can uh, use different colors for it, not just um, one solid brown color. That'll be a little boring, right? Over here in another window, I already got a, a little setup there. So I'm going to go over here to shading and see what I use there. All right, so I left the principal BSDF shader there. I brought in a color ramp, mapping, and texture coordinate. All right. So here I am in the shader editor at the bottom. If you wonder how I went here, I just went from layout, and I clicked on the shading workspace. Shift A, search, and I'm going to bring in mapping so I can get the, uh, there we go. Actually, that's not what I meant to bring in. I want to bring the color ramp, but that's okay. Mapping's going in there. Color ramp, here we go. Color ramp right in there, and then texture coordinate over here. So I always use texture coordinate with mapping. <clears throat> there we go. So generating right over here to this one. Verify that. Yep. And then vector right over here to this one right here to the factor. And then color right here, it's going to go over to base color. And right now it's going to be black and white. See, there it is, black and white from those colors. We just got to change these colors right here in the color ramp for the uh, the gradient. So this is going to be the color on the left side, so you can see there. So that'll be our lighter color there. So I got the swatch there selected. I'm going to click inside this color bar right there. And I'm going to bring up the value here to make it lighter. There we go. And I'll try to make like a yellowish color there, a little lighter. Uh, not too bad, maybe more yellow. They do make these with with egg, with egg yolks. All right, I'm gonna hit the plus sign here, bring in another swatch. There we go. And it's gonna just progressively get darker. So this one's gonna be a darker brown right here. So I'm gonna click on this one at the end, click on the color bar down here, and I'll make a darker brown color there. There we go. So it's not uh, coloring that we want it to right now. That's okay, we'll adjust it in a bit. And then this one right here, it's gonna be more like an orangey color. I'm trying to make orange. There we go. And how wide do I want those? Let's change this over to ease. Kind of ease it in. Yeah, I got ease there. All right, let's bring these in a little closer. All right, there we go. <clears throat> now to rate, rotate those, I'm going to go right here to rotation. And let me try 45 on the X here. And that did not do the trick. So let me try minus 30. There we go. It's looking better there. All right. Let me uh, hold down and drag here and go out this way. Oh, that's not doing it, so I have to go wider. So you just got to play around with these so you get the coordinates right. So over here I got minus 36 and 40, and then the Z is up a bit. So let me try that, minus 36, and then the Y is 40. There you go, that seemed to work. All right, so X was minus 36, and then the Y was 40. And here inside the mapping uh, node, shader node, 
and it's still kind of high up with the brown i can try to drag the brown here more these as well or i could also just change the z right here i can change it by a bit so i can try try 0.5 uh too far let me try 0 0.01 0 uh, 0 0.01 there it is too high 0.1 that looks a little neater may want to go more 0.15 there we go that looks cool right there all right and those look very shiny right now it kind of looks like flan like jello something uh, something nice creamy like a milk dot or something so now i gotta add some uh some texture nodes in here down here and i'm going to start out with a bump and the noise texture and then mapping and texture again so for those i can actually just copy these right here drag select control c control v and bring them down there we go and i'm going to bring in bump shift a search bump right there and put it right there collect normal to normal right there connect those two and i'm gonna bring in a noise texture search and start typing the noise there it is noise texture click in there and we try to put these together here and we're zooming in connect vector to vector and then factor here over the height there we go and we'll have to make some adjustments in a bit see there we go it looks horrible <laughs> what happened to my bread uh, notice how detailed these are. If you scale it up, you're going to make these smaller. Watch. See, there we go. So now it's trying to look more like bread. Kind of looks like a wall. Well, we can go up higher. Let me try 150. There we go. See, it looks like bread. And we'll see the little holes in there. Uh, you can also try a musgrave texture. Uh, but I like the noise texture for this one. And let's see what other settings got going on over here in my uh, experimental bread. And detail was 0.1. Distortion was 5. Detail 0.1 and the source show we went up to five. Cool. Now you can kind of see more holes in there, but you can play around these settings. But definitely um, check out the scale to something 100 or above for sure. I think we went five there. There we go. So it looks more like bread now. And everything else I'll leave as is. So now I'm going to go back over to the layout shader here. Cool. Let me go over to render so I can see my colors. All right, I, I mentioned this, um, I refer to this layout shader. It's a layout workspace, so sorry about that. Cool, so there's my bread. Oh, it looks kind of dark up there. I can try lighting it up over here, shading. And let me go back over here and just make this color a little lighter. I don't want it as dark. Uh, there, that's cool. <clears throat> All right, so that looks a little neater. I'm going to bring an HDR file in the background, zero for camera view. This is grayness here is really boring. And then I can decide whether I want to leave that light there or not. So to download HDRI files, which are these background images. So for instance, mine has um, this cool room in here once it loads. So I'm going to go find one at uh, hdrihaven.com, my favorite website, <clears throat> besides YouTube. And I'm going to go look for an indoor setting. All right, so then you want to scroll through here and see what looks like a good indoor setting for your uh, cake. Maybe not this one. It looks like a construction site. It's that auto service. Something that looks like a good spot for a location of your cake there. Well, it's not too bad over there. It looks kind of outdoorsy. A cave, yeah, you probably don't want to have that cake there in a cave. Uh, but if you were stuck in a cave, I guess a cake uh, would be nice, right? And let's see. Well, it looks cool for my cake. Maybe there's a kitchen one in here somewhere. So I'm just keep scrolling through here. Show me a kitchen. I've uh, searched for kitchen before in the search bar and it didn't give me any results. Is that a dental office? <laughs> Eating cake at the dentist? A bathroom? You yeah, know, I would not ever eat cake in a bathroom. All right, all right, all right. Where are we at? So there's this one right here. Looks like a kitchen, except uh, the, the color's kind of red. Uh, whatever. There's adjustments you can make on there, but I'm trying to make this. Um, without uh, complicating it too much. All right, so I'm gonna download a 4K file. These are the higher quality ones, lower quality middle, that's cool. Downloads a little faster, not as uh, overwhelming on my computer. So that's going over the downloads folder. I'm gonna go back over here to Blender and wait for that to download. Then I can go over here to World, the World tab, and it looks like it's done downloading. And I'm gonna click right here on this uh, white diode here next to color. There we go. Then I'm gonna go to Environment Texture. All right, so it's ready for the uh, HDRI file. So I'm going to go right here to open. 
and that's in my downloads folder so i'm gonna to go to downloads here wait for the load and it's right there i'm gonna double click that in wait for the load and it's coming in right now there we go cool and you can choose a good angle there actually these colors aren't too bad um this looks cool so if i think i'm gonna make my uh, my table here I'll make it reflective so i'm gonna go here to materials you i kind of make it metallic uh, metal and go to base color go with the grayish color there we go and then metallic all the way up there we go roughness how rough do i want this very very shiny i guess there we go specular you bring it all the way up not bad doesn't look too reflective so let me maybe bring down specular a bit uh we'll bring down roughness there we go that's cool right there all right just got to pick an angle for this uh, maybe get the baking utensils in the background where's all the baking stuff or you know what this is a cool angle right here too by the window let's see uh, something like this is cool control turn it zero make this money camera view all right let me select my camera here G for grabs, pull it up. There we go. Play button. There you go. Got the bread jiggling. Bounces up a little bit, up and down. That's fine. That's cool. This red color is fine, not bothering me too much. I almost forgot one important thing. Uh, so we have your bread selected. Get the soft body physics. Go over here to the properties panel. Make sure soft body physics is still active. Don't hit that X because then you have to start over. You can open cache right here, cache. And that's where we did the end to 100. You're gonna click on bake. And it's gonna save that animation. You can actually do this before you color your, your bread. This will also help it um, render a lot faster when you uh, render your animation. So just wait for this to go through. So now it's done baking. So now if I play it, it'll actually play a little faster. And then also if I wanna go bake changes over here, uh, I can Try to make some changes, whichever ones I can make. If they're not grayed out, you can click on update all two frames. And if they're grayed out, it doesn't let you change them. You're gonna have to delete your bake, change them, and then you can uh, bake it again. Uh, but this right here just basically stores inside your computer, uh, the simulation that you just created. And you can always go back and change everything around it. You can change the color of it. But the actual simulation itself, uh, if you wanna rotate your cake or something like that, you'd have to delete the bake and then start over. And now I'm just gonna convert this over to uh, video. So I'm gonna go over here to render, activate ambient occlusion, bloom, a bit of motion blur in there. Let's see this video play is uh, giving me some uh, slowdown, motion blur right there. Output, all right. And make this AVI JPEG so I get a video, 100 frames long. And I'm gonna click on the folder here and choose a spot to save it and give it a name. I'll put that on the desktop. I'm just gonna render out this animation here. Wait patiently. And then once I'm done, I can check out my animation. So I'll just wait a moment here. And here we are. You got a nice little bit of jiggle there. It's more of a bounce than a jiggle. That depends on the angle. I can see some jiggle there. Not too much there, but I got some bounce in there. Let's see, a little bit on top. Cool. But uh, there you go. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Uh, if you like to support the channel, hit like, subscribe. Share, comment, anything helps. Have an awesome day. Bye.